Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about monkeypox and what may be around the corner for the trucking industry. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos, where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers, consisting of leased on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities, running under our truck dispatch services. As always, guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you've provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk about monkeypox and the trucking industry as well as of course our supply chain. I mean, everything's under question now. And uh, from what I'm seeing, this is uh, very, very similar to what the, you know, we just exited over the last two years. Now, what I believe is in looking at some of the differences and similarities, contrasting and comparing previous experiences, previous historical uh, data to what may be happening into the near future. This may end up being one of our core videos because this really is such an important uh, deal and we're watching it unravel and expand and uh, you know we're all learning more and more about this new monkeypox virus that's going around the country. Uh, in fact, it is in over 20 countries globally. There are over 200 cases, uh, including here in the United States, uh, where I am in Salt Lake City. We actually have a couple of confirmed cases here, and it looks like it is uh, rapidly uh, kind of expanding and uh, getting all over the world. Now, guys, uh, the, most of this information is directly from the CDC. You can get that information by going to uh, the CDC's website. What they're uh, claiming is that uh, some cases were reported among men who have sex with men. Now, uh, we didn't have that issue with COVID-19, so that's definitely a difference. Human to human transmission uh, primarily goes through uh, large respiratory droplets. Again, we didn't have that with COVID because uh, that was primarily aerosolized and these are large droplets. This may make a case for wearing masks once again. It may actually end up being uh, a much better way to approach this thing than it might have been with COVID because of the different types of uh, droplets that we're dealing with here. Now, according to the CDC, there's a 10% death rate with monkeypox, and uh, I've even read about the Congo variant, which has a death rate of 15% and higher. So, very big difference. Now, I went online to try to get an actual uh, figure from the CDC as to what is the death rate, what is the mortality rate uh, for COVID. And surprisingly, I couldn't find it. I mean, they have all sorts of statistics on there. They slice and dice uh, all the data that they've collected over the last couple of years, but there is no clear indication of an actual uh, you know, mortality rate. So based on my rudimentary analysis, I've come down with a number of 1.2%. So I, you know, may be wrong, but probably pretty close. So we're right around that 1% uh, mortality rate with COVID and 10% or possibly higher with monkeypox. Now, here's the issue with this. Uh, with COVID, the, you know, the, the, the primary folks that we were worried about were the elderly, right? They, were, they consisted of about 75% of the total number of deaths that happened. The folks uh, who are older and people who had comorbidities or uh, you know, pre-existing conditions, if you will, that did not work out well with the virus. Now, what's different here in this case is that there are risk factors for severe cases and severe cases are the ones who lead to the fatalities. Now, the number one uh, that I found was being younger was a risk factor leading to a severe case. Now, in the past, we were looking at old folks. Now, this is affecting younger people. Having prolonged exposure to the virus, having poor overall health, and developing complications all uh, are considered risk factors for severe cases. Well, that changes the game a bit, you know, because there's a lot of people during the the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the coronavirus pandemic, during that time, folks uh, did not want to drive. CDL, you know, truckers did not want to drive. A lot of people exited the industry. And the question is, what would happen when the death rate or the mortality rate is 10x that of what we had experienced over the last uh, two, year, uh, two years? So there, there is a big issue, 1.2 versus 10%, uh, the, the way that it spreads and it can be uh, found on, you know, for example, uh, your bed sheets and things you touch. And so, so there is a, a good amount of spread that could happen. So imagine the monkeypox lockdowns that might happen based on our experience with the coronavirus, uh, you know, pandemic that we had just experienced. And what happened back then? Well, what we saw in the freight industry is a major decline in rates, 
in uh, freight availability, tonnage and volume, right? So, and then there was a major spike up in rates that lasted for about two years. And it was based on the fact that a lot of companies just simply didn't make it, went out of business and it created a tight capacity crunch in the industry with a uh, limited amount of trucks and uh, you know, a large number of freight that needed to be moved. Now, what we may be looking at is something extremely, extremely similar, except the difference is that this time, people are going to be really, really risking their life out there working. And the question is how many folks will actually jump out of the industry and decide to call it quits. Now, this is definitely a developing story. Things are going to change. Everything is quite fluid, but I'd love to hear your take on this, anything that you've learned about this topic, uh, questions, comments, concerns. Let's definitely talk about it in a comment section below. I'm gonna switch over to camera. We're gonna look over the loads that we book for our customers and I ask you guys to please smash that like button make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in just a moment welcome back let's take a look at some of these loads gonna start off with a reefer coming out of Cincinnati Ohio going to New Albany Mississippi this uh, light load 7,000 pounds of dry goods 491 miles booked at $1,500 got them 305 a mile and a reefer stayed off on that one Jasper Alabama to Brighton Michigan 42,000 pound load of uh, fresh chicken 722 miles booked at $3,500 got them 485 a mile then Lawton Michigan with a one pick two dropper going to Bridgeton Missouri and Springfield Missouri with a 42.5 load of foodstuffs, 625 miles booked at 1,700 bucks, got them 272 a mile. Then Independence, Missouri to Lincoln, Nebraska. It's a light load, 10,000 pounds of non-food, dry goods, uh, 205 miles booked at 1,000 bucks, got them 488 a mile. Reefer stayed off on that one. Then Council Bluffs, Iowa going to Gas City, Indiana. It's a 41,000 pound load of FAK, 633 miles booked at 2,500 bucks, got them 395 a mile. Did an excellent job. It's a reefer running Friday to Friday, grows $10,200 during the week, ran 2,676 loaded miles at an average of 381 per loaded mile average. Next, we got another reefer coming out of Wallace, North Carolina, going to South Bend, Indiana. It's a 40,000 pound load of chicken, 817 miles booked at $3,500, got them 428 a mile. Then Avondale, Michigan, or excuse me, Allendale, Michigan, going to... Uh, Chantilly, Virginia and Alexandria, Virginia. One pick, two dropper, 40,000 pound loaded dairy products. 693 miles booked at $3,000, got them 433 a mile. And I finished off with Mount Crawford, Virginia, going on uh, Nebraska City, Nebraska. It's a 38,000 pound load of uh, FAK, 1,126 miles booked at $3,000, got them 266 a mile. And they finished off running Friday to Friday, grossed $9,500 in their reefer, ran 2,636 loaded miles at an average of 360 per loaded mile average. Uh, excellent, excellent job. Uh, next, we got ourselves a, a vented van. Always a great way to go is to take your van and get it vented. One of the best, uh, one of the best things you could do for your bottom line. Guys, uh, this vented van started out in uh, Huntington, West Virginia, going to Birmingham, Alabama. It's a 20,000 pound load of general merchandise, quite light. 530 miles booked at 1400 bucks, got them 264 a mile. Then Birmingham, Alabama to Hendersonville, Tennessee. It's a 43,000 pound load of drums on pallets. 209 miles booked at 800 bucks, got them 383 a mile. Then Portland, Tennessee to Effingham, Illinois. It's a 43,000 pound load of iron castings. Uh, looks like uh, 255 miles booked at 1200 bucks, got them 481 a mile. Then Front Attack, uh, Kansas going to Opelika, Alabama, 40,000 pound load of uh, FAK, 732 miles booked at 2500 bucks, got them 342 a mile. Then Columbus, Georgia to Bowling Green, Kentucky, 41,500 pound load of general goods, 415 miles booked at 1500 bucks, got them 361 a mile. Then uh, Nashville, Tennessee to Stevenson, Alabama, 45,000 pound load of uh, bales, of probably cardboard bales, 121 miles booked at 900 bucks, got them 744 a mile, and they finished off with Rome, Georgia to Houston, Mississippi. Now, this is a 45,000 pound load of FAK, 269 miles booked at 1,000 bucks, got them 372 a mile. They ran from Thursday to Thursday, grossed $9,300 for the week. Ran 2,531 loaded miles at an average of 367 per loaded mile average. So very, very well done there. Next, we got ourselves a reefer out of Greensville, uh, South Carolina, going to Memphis, Tennessee. It's a light load, 10,000 pounds of plastic totes, 536 miles booked at 1,500 bucks, got them 280 a mile. Then Memphis, Tennessee, zero deadhead to Bolingbrook, Illinois, an excellent market, 39,000 pound load of finished goods, 536 miles, identical, booked that one at 1,850, which is great because it's going to Illinois at even better money. 
uh, got them 345 a mile. Then Crest Hill, Illinois, going to Warren, Michigan, uh, FAK load, 35,000 pounds, 305 miles, booked at 1,600 bucks, got them five and a quarter on that one. Then uh, Wilson, Ohio to Salem, Virginia, it's a 42,000 uh, potato load, palletized potatoes, 493 miles, booked at 1,500 bucks, got them 304 a mile. And then Concord, North Carolina to Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, this is a 40,000 pound load of general dry goods, 584 miles booked at 1800 bucks, got them 308 a mile and the reefer stayed off. These guys ran, actually all of these are solos there. Uh, Tuesday to Tuesday ran $8,250 in gross, um, ran 2,454 loaded miles at an average of 336 per loaded mile average. An excellent, excellent job. Then we got ourselves a regular dry van coming out of Baton, Texas, uh, or Baytown, Texas, going to Wilmington, North Carolina. 43,000 pound load of uh, carbo wax, uh, poly, uh, some sort of polyurethane or something like that. Uh, 1,187 miles booked at 3,200 bucks, got them 270 a mile. And then they did a one pick six dropper out of uh, Greenville, North Carolina, with drops in Memphis, Tennessee, Paris, Texas. Uh, Carrollton, Texas, Corpus Christi, Texas, Far, Texas, and a final in Brownsville, Texas. It's a 35,000 pound load of forklifts, 1,942 miles booked at 6,000 bucks, even got them 309 a mile on lots and lots of miles. Uh, these guys ran from Saturday to Friday, so six days on the road, ended up grossing 9,200 bucks on these two uh, runs in six days, ran 3,129 loaded miles at an average of 294 per loaded mile average. Then we have ourselves uh, Cortland, Indiana with a one pick, two dropper going to Chicago, Illinois and Cortland, Indiana. So a round trip run, 42,000 pound load of eggs, 498 miles, booked at 1700 bucks, got them 341 a mile. Then Seymour, Indiana going to, uh, with a one pick, two dropper to Ankeny, Iowa and West Bend, Iowa. It's uh, another load of eggs, 42,000 pounds, 665 miles, booked at 1550 got them 233 a mile. Then Austin, Minnesota to Rochester, New York, 41,000 pound load of food grade products, 979 miles booked at 4,000 bucks, got them 409 a mile, going to a very good market. And then Baldwinsville, uh, New York, going to Grove Port, Ohio, 43,000 400 pound load of beer, 475 miles booked at 1250, got them 263 a mile. Excellent, excellent job. Guys, Monday to Monday, grossed $8,500, ran 2,617 loaded miles with an average of 325 per loaded mile. Average, did an absolutely fantastic job. I'm gonna finish off with a regular dry van coming out of Laredo, Texas, going to Warrensburg, Missouri. It's a 43,000 pound load of metals, 940 miles booked at 3,300 bucks, got them 351 a mile. Then New Century, Kansas, to far Texas, a uh, light load, 18,000 pound load of uh, dressing, 1,016 miles, booked at 2,300 bucks, got them 226 a mile, and then right out of uh, Brownsville, Texas, going to Granite City, Illinois, it's a 40,000 pound food load, uh, 1,139 miles, booked at 3,500 bucks, got them 307 a mile, again, going to a fantastic market out in Illinois for really good money with great uh, number of miles. These guys, that was it for the week, running Friday to Friday, ended up grossing uh, $9,100 in a regular dry van, ran 3,095 loaded miles at an average of 294 per loaded mile average. So an excellent job for all of these guys out here. Dispatchers did a very, very good job. You know, it's really important to work and trust your dispatchers. Our guys, they've been doing this for years. We know exactly what we're doing as far as uh, positioning you, making sure that we know uh, you know, where, what the beat is on the market to, to get you to pivot, to triangulate you guys to make the top dollar in the market. So obviously there's going to be some trust that needs to be built up between you and a dispatcher. But at the end of the day, when you're working with the best, you are going to get the best results. So you know, if you work really hard, you have the tenacity, you have the willingness to work, you have the right equipment, you have an aged MC or you know, you're at least on owner operator with us, you can make this kind of money doing the same thing that these guys have been doing. And we have plenty and plenty of videos in our playlist that you can go back Back weeks and months and even years uh, back to see that we've always consistently done quite well. So if you're looking to make more money out of this current declining market and stay on top so you can uh, make it through the difficult times and make it up when uh, the markets begin to surge again, you need to get in touch with us. Please uh, fill out the chat box at any one of our web pages at aftdispatch.com forward slash go. You can also call or text us at 801-448-6363. And like I said, do anything you can. Uh, I would definitely fill out the chat box. I know that it's been difficult for us to get back to everyone and we are missing quite a bit of calls. But if you fill 
out the chat box. It takes about 10 seconds. We'll get your information. We'll make sure to get in touch with you, you know, answer any and all questions that you may have. And uh, hopefully if it's a good fit, get started. Guys, until next week, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care.